About to get toasty in here. I always sweat in these videos because it's for some reason 100 degrees up here all the time. Why is it dark? Does it look dark to you? Yeah, it just got darker. It was like. <sighs> all right. Hey guys, welcome Hold on one back. Sec. Hold on one sec. What? <laughs> Got a little bit of a sweatage going. I'm just trying to not uh -oh. begin this. We way. have to turn my fan off in my room whenever we take a video because my fan makes this like clicking noise, and you can hear it in the video. So we always get so hot. Like we will be dripping sweat yeah. after this video. Yeah, especially because this is kind of like a passionate video, so yeah. you get all heated. And I'm just gonna you know, sweat. And the Holy Spirit's just gonna impart wisdom, yeah. supernatural, heavenly insight. Yeah. And you know, when you feel the power of the Holy Spirit, you get a little toasty, yeah. a little Pentecostal fire in your okay. spirit. Okay. Okay. Welcome. So, Welcome to the video, video. Guys. <laughs> It's been a minute since I posted on my channel because with everything going on with the Black Lives Matter movement, we thought that it would be best if we muted our channel and just stopped posting to allow for all of that content to just be amplified. But we are back now and we thought that the best video to start out with like coming back after that little break was to do another faith-based Q&A. I asked you guys for questions before that whole movement even started, but a lot of the questions were actually about racism so we thought that we would answer those and then get into some other faith-based que faith questions there it is. as well yep. so to start off if you guys have never seen one of these videos before we have one other one I will link it down below and if you don't know who we are I'm Maddie this is Kaden we're both Christian and we're we don't know Christian yeah <laughs> great we, way to describe well, us they don't know what religion we are I'm not a religion okay they Just don't kidding. know what we believe if they've never seen us before also, just to preface, we don't have all the answers. These are our opinions, just what we believe. It's our response as best as we can say it. So Yeah, it's more of a question and response more than a question and answer because I'm not God. I'm not going to have all the answers ever, but we have answers that come from our experiences and from our own relationship with Jesus and our own walks and things we've learned from scripture and um, things I've learned in seminary. So we have a broad basis of understanding and some sort of answer, so. All that being said, let's get into it. Let's just start off with the first question. What do you think about all the racial stuff that is happening right now? I think that it's just, I think it's just terrible. I think the fact that it's 2020 and we're still dealing with this because we never did deal with it is heartbreaking. I think the, the fact that the black community is hurting and some people do not want to recognize that is also sad. And I think that what we should all do is find a way to be a part of the solution. And I think that I'm glad it's being talked about. I'm glad that it's being brought to light. I'm glad that opportunities are arising for people to learn and for people to listen and for things to get better. But I think we just need a lot of Jesus right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we need a lot of prayer. And I think we need a lot of patience. And we need a lot of not relying on our own understanding. But like the Bible says is to rely on on God and, and not our own understanding and our own emotions and our own feelings, but to, to focus on Jesus and what he says about this and how would Jesus act in this situation. And we know exactly how Jesus would act. He would love people. He would listen to people. He would meet people where they are. He would love people even if he disagreed with people. And he would be the first person to meet somebody's needs, to allow somebody to talk to him to uh, be the light of the world. And that is exactly what Jesus would do. So I think that's exactly what we should do. Yeah, personally, I think that racism is evil. I think it's from the enemy. I don't think it's a black versus white thing. I think it's a good versus evil thing. And I think that if someone is to look at someone else and either think differently or act differently, act violently because of the color of their skin, I think that's the evilness in your heart. And I think that truly the only way that we can move past racism, although all of this social media stuff is so amazing to bring awareness to it and make people kind of aware of their own actions, I I think we're really gonna see change when people have heart transformations and that evilness is taken out of their heart and I believe as a Christian that the only way to do that is through the Holy Spirit and a full heart transformation so totally. I think that as Christians and as believers we all need to be praying a lot for people who are struggling with racism we need to be praying for them and praying that they would have a heart transformation and that Jesus would open their eyes to see other people the way that he sees them yeah. and I think um, 
um, now more than ever, like how he was saying, it's just important to love each other and not fight hate with hate and fight violence with violence, but to show each other love and even the people who we see as evil, just show them the love of Jesus and just pray that they would have a heart transformation so that we can all kind of just tackle racism and move past it and, you know, just live in a better world. And yeah, live a better, I think it's, it's going to take work. It's going to take vulnerability. It's going to take looking at ourselves. And I think the knee-jerk response for humanity is when there's problems, it must be other people. Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians, we're called to, to recognize our roles in things and recognize how we can play a part in the solution. I think it's less this and it's more this. Mm -hmm. and saying, okay, well, what role do I have? Where can I make a difference? And it's going to start here. It's going to start with me saying, what biases do I have? What things have I said? What things have I done? And knowing, okay, I have, I have work to do. I have stuff to do. And so I think it's going to take, like you said, a lot of Jesus, a lot of work, a lot of patience. And I have hope that through the power of the Holy Spirit, there can be change, and there will be change, and we will be fighting for change, and we'll be fighting for black people to be viewed equally, and viewed as beloved, uh, wonderfully made children of God. And so, uh, we're praying fervently. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the next question? Yeah, okay. Next up, this is an easier question. What version of the Bible do you use? Wow! <laughs> uh, I think the message version is the only version of the Bible that's actually accurate. <laughs> I like the the NLT mm -hmm. or the NIV NLT or the KGSVBT. No. Just kidding, you just say a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I also really enjoy the uh, CFP version. Kid for Brazil paraphrase. Correct. That's a great version. Uh, it's no, called stop. Is Memory is Not That Good. You're and, confusing people sorry. if they don't know. The NLT, New Living Translation, is what my Bible is. I think it's very relevant. I think it's easy to understand, and I just like it. Also, the Message Bible is really awesome. I think that you should have a Message Bible and an I was NLT. just going to say that. I think, I think it's great yeah. to have two translations. The Message version is literally like you're talking to a friend, and he's just like, they're like Twitter posts they're yeah. like it's just like super easy to understand um, it's it is decently close to the original translation as well there is obviously always going to be like discrepancies, but the NLT, I think it's great. It's, it's very accurate and, um, it's great to cross reference with something like the message because there's stuff in the Bible you read and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. And you can go to the message version and the message will clarify for you and put it kind of in like 2020 terms. It does. Yeah. yeah. And that goes with this question. How can I understand the Bible better? Definitely getting a message Bible. If you have a hard time kind of like putting together what yeah. they're saying. Also in the Bible that I have, I will link it down. Down below for you guys it's really awesome because it has little sections that kind of explain like the theme of that chapter and what the Bible's trying to say keywords lays out some context yeah it gives you some context and it just kind of helps explain it's not like oh here's the text and that's all you get it, there's little serpents that really help you understand so I think it's also important that you understand the the way the Bible was written and you can understand like you can go through the minor prophets and major prophets all that kind of stuff but it's just easy if you just think about it there's the old test and there's the New Testament and God's relationship with us and with sin is different in both testaments That's why you can see people saying well Why is God so angry and mean and evil in the Old Testament? First of all, God is never mean God is never angry. God is never evil God just has a response to sin has a response to the brokenness in the world has a response to evil and his response as being pure good is the response that you see in the Old Testament that's why sacrifices are made that's why things have to happen in order for people to become clean through the law but the New Testament is God saving us from that law saving us from the consequences of sin which happens to be non-relationship with Jesus and allows us through the sacrifice of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, a way to get to him. So you can kind of like read the Old Testament. I like to do it by trying to find Jesus throughout the Old Testament, reading the Old Testament through a Jesus lens. And you can find just tons of just examples of Jesus. And because people are like, oh, well, Jesus and God seem so different. They're the same and they have the same characteristics. Just the way they are able to respond to sin because a covenant is different. Yeah. Okay, next question. How did you get into your faith? So if you guys don't know this, we have a podcast podcast that's all about our faith. On YouTube and Instagram, we try and share like our life and the things we love and incorporate our faith into that. But the podcast is like solely faith. And we have two episodes that are specifically about our testimonies. I also have a YouTube video about my testimony. So I will link all of those down below if you guys would like to learn more about that. Because that would take literally the whole video to talk about those things. So I'll just link those below if you guys would 
would like to know more about that. Okay, next question it says, as times change, do you believe the interpretation of the of certain things in the Bible should change too? I think that it depends on what you mean by interpretation of the Bible, mm -hmm. because I, I think it depends on how you read the Bible, mm -hmm. because how the Bible should be read is obviously the firm, true word of God, and there's obviously contextual interpretations that are written because it was written 2,000 years ago, and there's different contexts, there's different cultures. You have to be able to have a little bit of a cultural intelligence about the people back then to understand some of the things they say. But I think the message of Jesus has remained the same and will always remain the same. And I think if you're interpreting the Bible and you're saying, well, that doesn't really make sense to me anymore because it's 2020, I think you should base yourself and your values off of Jesus, not off of the year. Yeah. Not off of what culture is saying, not off what the world is saying, but saying, what does Jesus say? Yeah. What is his um, interpretation of, of me and of the culture instead of what is my interpretation of the culture and how do I make the Bible fit that? So I think it's important that as, as Christians, we don't try and fit Jesus into culture, but we fit culture into Jesus and saying, you listen, Jesus sets the standard for me. Jesus sets the standard for what I believe. Jesus sets the standard for how I interact with people, how I interact with culture, how I interact with all things, and how I interpret the Bible is through a, a biblical, Jesus-centered lens. Yeah. This question makes me think of this YouTube video. I'm not sure if it's the video or the channel's titled this, but it was called God is Gray, and it was like the gray area of the Bible, and like how some people believe it's just black and white, like that's how it is, and then she was saying, no, it's gray, which, I mean, the video I watched was her saying, that sex before marriage is fine because the Bible was written so long ago and in culture today it's just not like it's not an easy thing to do it's not a common thing to do it should be fine you know and personally I don't agree with that there's things that God talks about he talks about morals and values which stay standard but then there's there's cultural things like um, a lot of things that come up is like things in, in first Timothy and things that Paul says that about like women and how women shouldn't lead or how women shouldn't be in those positions. Those are all reliant on context and culture. Mm -hmm. But then when Paul is talking about how we should be living through the fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh, and producing love, peace, patience, kindness, joy, self-control, gentleness, instead of what the flesh produces, sexual immorality, anger, bitterness, all that kind of thing, I think that that draws the line. I think you're able to yeah. then identify, okay, well, these are morals and values from Jesus, and these are cultural and contextual. And those things are very important to identify. I think it's a great question. But I think that those things like sex before marriage, um, other things like that are non-negotiable because they're very clear in the scriptures. Yeah, that's a really good piece of advice I think whenever you're confused just look at the fruits of the spirit versus the fruits of the flesh and just kind of think like whatever it is that you're struggling with just kind of look at that and think is that a fruit of the spirit or a fruit of the flesh and like where is my desire coming from is it coming from Jesus or is it coming from my own desires and then kind of work with that if that makes sense totally okay this question says I'm asking you the same question again because <laughs> she asked us last time we yeah. just didn't get to it but we talked about it in our podcast a little bit so if you do want to elaborate on this and dive deeper into this question we talk about it on our podcast but the question is christianity real and tattoos hair dyeing botox etc is it okay what's up with it is it bad and our views are again this is contextual in, in the scriptures um people were marking their bodies 2,000 years ago for different reasons that people are marking their bodies now. Uh, 2,000 years ago, they were marking their bodies for um, the dead, for ritualistic things. Um, and nowadays, it's I don't believe it's bad. I don't believe that if you want to get Botox because you get a little wrinkly, go for it. Um, I got tattoos. Yeah, I dye my hair. I get extensions. I would dye my hair, but she won't let me. <laughs> So I just, <laughs> I think that it doesn't come down to, it's it's not a uh, religious debate, I, it's a cultural debate. And I think that Jesus loves you, he loves um, who you are, he loves what you're doing. And when the Bible says, take care of your body, it's the temple of God. I think that that relates to a lot of other things than harmless stuff like 
hair dyeing and tattoos and, and Botox. Yeah, I think, I mean, there are things to consider. I think it's all up to the person why you're doing it, you know, why you're doing what you're doing. But I wouldn't get caught up in it because at the end of the day, Jesus doesn't care if you got highlights. Jesus cares about your heart, how you show his love to other people, how you live your life and who you are at your core. So if you're like really debating about it and just really struggling, I would just say, don't get that caught up in it. Personally, I don't think it's a matter of salvation or not, you know, like. Yeah, and uh, my question would be too is like, why are you struggling with it? Yeah. Why does it weigh heavily for you? Is it because of the, the church you grew up in? Is it because of the people that you're surrounded by, the type of um, Christianity that you're involved in? Is it is it other people's influences or is it a spiritual conviction and you're saying, I feel like Jesus is telling me not to get tattoos or not to get Botox? But is it from God or is it because that's what your pastor said mm -hmm. or that's what seems like in the Bible is being portrayed? And so I think it's important, again, it's all about diving deeper than just the surface level of like scripture and surface level of stuff is understanding context. Doesn't again, it say in Revelation that Jesus had tattoos? I think it says that he yeah. has son he has, of God on his thighs yeah, he has or something like on that. His thighs. I've yeah. heard that before. Yeah, I'm trying to get tatted like Jesus. <laughs> but um, we go way deeper in this on an episode called Context Counts um, on our podcast, a good, good podcast. So if you want way more in-depth um, discussion on this, way more details, um, we dive super deep, so go check that out. I think it's a 30-minute episode. So, Okay, the next question, and I think our last question. Well. Whatever she says. <laughs> uh, is how do you find out what church is the best fit for you? I think this is so important because I think church sets the foundation for a relationship with Jesus. It feeds you. It supports you. It gives you a community to bounce off of and be uplifted by and to grow with. And I think there's a couple things that you need to... Um, decide when it comes to church. I think one, your intentions for church will clarify what kind of church you want to go to. If church to you is a place that is to serve you, to um, meet your needs, to encourage you, then I think that that's going to, you know, kind of sway what kind of church you go to. But what we kind of believe is that you go to church to grow in Jesus, to meet Jesus, to learn, to be encouraged, to meet others, to grow as a disciple, to learn how to disciple others. And I think Finding a church that, one, feeds you. So when you go and you hear from the pastor or you're in worship, you're like, man, I feel the presence of God here. I feel encouraged. I feel like it's stretching me. It's growing me. It's not just kid gloving me, but it's stretching me and growing me and encouraging me. I'm meeting other believers that are where I'm at. I relate to these people. They're growing me. They're stretching me. Um, I think those things are really important when you're finding a church community because I, I think that if we're not careful, church can become a place that we go to to consume instead of a place that we go to to um, engage. And I think you need to go to a church that you can feel like you can engage with, that you can dive in and lean into the message, lean into what they're doing in the community, lean into how to serve the church and serve the people instead of just being like, okay, well, I need a church that's just going to encourage me that I could get rich, you know, or something like that. So That I could get rich. <laughs> Yeah, what he said. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, one more question. <laughs> Would a good Christian man ever want to marry me if I lived with my boyfriend in a previous relationship? You're getting phone um, calls home up girl, the wazoo. Yeah, I know. People keep calling me. I'm just super popular. Um, girl, <laughs> if he is a good Christian man, he will love you for who you are. And if any man is going to condemn you for who you were in the past, what you've done, what mistakes you've made, Tony, he's the road, not Jack. the one. He's not the one. He's not. In any relationship, you know, you should go into it and I mean, not even just go into it. You should be in it always with a forgiving mindset, with an understanding mindset, with a gracious heart. That's how you make relationships work. And if he's going to be like, um, you live with someone, you're a ter terrible person, I deserve better, then homegirl, you deserve better. Yeah. Okay. Come on. <laughs> I think that a good Christian man would be somebody that is like Jesus. Yeah. And I think that Jesus would never disqualify you for what mm -hmm. you've done in the past. And I think if somebody wants to disqualify you for what you've done in the past, then they need to be a better Christian man mm -hmm. and be more like Jesus, search their heart and figure that out. Because everybody has a past. Everybody's done things and walked through things. And Jesus is very clear that that never disqualifies you from the, the promise on your life for the purpose and the plan that he's, that he's designed you for. Yeah. And nobody ever should tell you that it does. Yeah. Bada boom. Bada boom. So hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Just kidding. He might be great. 
I don't know. Okay, so there are a lot more questions, but this video is very long. So if you guys want us to do another one, let us know in the comments. We really like doing these. We really love answering your guys' questions. So let us know if yeah. you have a question. You may have asked it or not asked it yet, um, and we just like didn't get to it or whatever. Leave it again in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram. Keep an eye out because I'll be doing kind of like little question boxes for a few your episodes if you want to contribute questions also it's important to know the good good podcast season two is coming very 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 soon yeah like very soon uh it's going to be different but better and there will be episodes and opportunities for you guys to ask questions and lean in there and that platform gives us a little bit more time and a little bit more um we can just go a little bit more in depth with these questions so if you do have questions deeper questions super theological questions. Don't be afraid to ask them on the Good Good Podcast season two coming up. And like she said, those will be on her story and my story, little question boxes, so keep an eye out for yeah. that. Yeah, and the Good Good Podcast Instagram account. We'll have it Correct. all linked in the description, so if you guys want to, check it out. But if not, we'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you liked this one. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And we'll see if you guys you later. Did. Love you guys. Bye. Super good.